Welcome to the First Mentor Podcast. Here, you will hear us talk about a variety of topics for the entire family that will hopefully spark a discussion, create a new curiosity, or simply teach you something new. The goal is to inspire you to learn life skills and soft skills not taught in school and prepare you to live an extraordinary life. Come on and spend some time with us on your commute to school or anytime you're free. Welcome back, everyone. This is your host, Vanessa Yang. Thank you so much for joining me for episode four of the First Mentor Podcast. And I wanted to ask you, what is one topic that you'd wish you'd learn when you were at younger age, especially for us parents out there? And one topic that I've heard that comes up over and over again after discussions with different parents is money and personal finance. All of us wished we'd known how to handle money at an earlier age, And we also wanted to make sure that our kids learn this very special topic that unfortunately is not taught at school. So I took that to heart. And as a result, I am very excited to have a good friend of mine join me for the podcast today. Her name is Vicky Rang Supson. We've known each other for several years now, but I wanted to share her background with you a little bit. So she's been in Los Angeles for multiple years now and graduated at UCLA with a bachelor's degree in business economics and an emphasis in accounting. And after graduation, she worked at a public accounting firm similar to me for multiple years, joined the Walt Disney Company for a little bit before becoming a financial advisor. So for the past 20 plus years, she's been a financial advisor with Ameriprise, And this company is formerly known as American Express Financial Advisors. So in working for this career, she actually has two certifications. She's a CPA and a CFP. So CPA stands for Certified Public Accountant. I know that because I'm one as well. And CFP stands for Certified Financial Planner. So it's amazing that she has both. And her main job as a financial advisor is really help all her clients reach their financial goals. And that could cover many, many topics such as retirements or saving money for the children's college education. So she sits down with her clients, which range from generally their 20s and their 90s, and talks to them and understands what's important to them before they work on a goal together. But what's important, she thinks, is that young adults, when they're just about to earn income, early in their career, learn how to handle money. And the next category of her clients that are very important is when they're about to retire, they're a few years away from that special time of their life and they need to prepare how to make that money last longer. So anyways, without further ado, I am going to start talking to Vicky right away. So I'm very excited today to have my friend Vicky Rank Supson here with me. And Vicky and I have known each other, I, I, I don't know, like five, six, yeah, four, five years already because um, our two youngest sons have been best friends since kindergarten. So mm-hmm. I think that's how I met her through the very first play date that the boys <laughs> wanted. And um, Vicky, is that what you recollect too? Is that what, how we met the first time? Yeah, I remember. I remember I came to your house <laughs> since kindergarten. They've been friends since kindergarten. Yeah, and I'm our so kids. glad... We're still keeping in touch and they're still having a great time, even though, unfortunately, your boys moved um, to a different school, but that's okay. They still get along really well. And it's yes, just amazing. absolutely. We yeah. see you guys pretty much every week. Yeah, <laughs> quite often, which is <laughs> awesome. I love it. And that's yeah. what I really enjoy about doing the podcast is really just inviting my friends just to have a chat and, and sharing mommy topics, so to speak. And today, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to cover the topic of money, personal finance, if you want to say it in a more professional way and how we view it. She will share with us a little bit from her perspective, her experience, and hopefully some stories, because I know she shared some stories with me about her clients, which are really funny at times. <laughs> uh, and what I thought was really interesting when we prepared for this conversation is really how you view money in the different buckets. So I wanted to start there. So when you said to me last time, this is how you look at money. You earn money, you keep money, you grow money, you spend money, and then you donate money. 
So five areas, if I'm counting correctly. So I would just right. want to touch upon each of them a little bit. If you could share with me how you view, let's start with earn. All right. Well, you know, I think for earning money, it just depends on the different life stage you're in. So, you know, in terms of earning money, it's just kind of finding opportunities and you know, I know you have a lot of experience, you know, with earning money for your kids because, you know, your kids uh, do chores. I th That's how my kids earn money. You know, they do chores. But I think your kids are uh, definitely doing real real work yes. to earn money. <laughs> what, what I've done, I mean, my kids are um, not officially in the earning stage yet. They're not old enough. But I think it's in a way, especially with technology nowadays, you could be 10 years old and make money. Um and when you're older, a teen over 16, I believe that's the age, you could get a job, right? That's a good way to mm -hmm. look at it. But nowadays, I've seen some of my friends, younger kids who started making jewelry or soap or even some were selling slime on the internet. Oh, yes, When, when yes. slime was really popular. Very popular, that's right. right. That's right. You probably that's have friends right. who did that too. And so you can sell things online. doesn't matter how old you are. Yeah, and I know some kids, and sorry, in, in our school district, they actually... Um, they put up a lemonade stand. You oh, know, they do that in your they, neighborhood? Uh -huh. They do. They do. Once a year, there are a few kids that really know about that because the house just happens to be across from our school. So they can put up a sign mm -hmm. right outside of school, which is uh -huh. across to the house and say lemonade stand. In fact, we're doing a front yard. And then one of the things we're doing is to plant some citrus trees. So I have <laughs> that in mind. Lemon That's trees, awesome. lemonade for the kids. <laughs> no, it's all about location, right? Location, location, yeah. location. So those kids are very smart to set it up right across from the school. So yes, yeah. old fashioned lemonade stand, people still do that. I've heard that about that quite often. Yes, and, yes. And then other ways I've seen kids do, I mean, YouTube, right? I'll, YouTube did not exist when we were kids, no. um, but it became really popular. And I've seen, I mean, the earner, the person on YouTube that makes the most money started when he was, I think, five or six years old. Oh my God. My kids are so into these YouTubers and they're, you know, that's what we spend time on you know let's watch this guy let's watch that guy yeah there's one guy i can't remember his name but he he used to be a jpl scientist and then he was doing all these experiments so they will tell me you know who are these youtubers and they're making a ton of money right so and yeah good way and then some kids do that too but my kids um i've done and it's more for different reasons but they did acting for a little bit maybe just for a year Mm -hmm. just to learn it, but they were able to put some money on the side and save it. And mm -hmm. my younger son actually earned his own money for his own iPad, which he was very proud of purchasing. Oh my, I'm proud of him. Because <laughs> <laughs> I told him, I'm not paying for it. You want one? At nine years old, you, you earn it yourself. So he yeah. <laughs> put money on the side. Well, at that age, probably, you know, you do need some help from the parents to set you up, like, you know, a lemonade stand. You can't be setting one up, you sure. know, a 10-year-old, you know. And so for acting and all, you know, I'm sure you, you do a lot of driving around, sending yes. them around to, you know, <laughs> to different studios and all. So kudos to you. Um, but I guess, you know, when they get to, you know, older teens, I, I, my kids are not that age, you know, 10 and 12. So I think, you know, we probably can talk to a, you know, any moms of like teenagers and see what, how kids are making money. I know yeah. my husband, you know, they, he used to work for Nordstrom's and he used to work at a Staples and, uh -huh. you know, places like that. Um, and I think I remember, you know, talking to a client one time and, you know, he, they were complaining that their younger children, you know, they're like, oh, it's not a really good job. But then this is what I told them. I said, you know, in your mind, it might not be a good job because they're doing, you know, very manual work, whatever mm -hmm. it is. But there's no bad jobs out there, especially for younger kids, because, you know, the quote unquote, you know, the worse the job it is, you know, the better the experience they get, because then they would know they don't want to do that for the rest of their lives. So <laughs> it's point. a good experience in the sense that, OK, well, you don't want to be doing manual laboring. So you have you've been there, done that. You know that that's not what you want to spend your time doing all your life. So it's a good experience in the sense that, it's, you know, you don't want to go there. So yeah. go to school. And, you know, Absolutely. make sure you go graduate from college and then, you know, make more money that way. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, retail, like your husband used to do, is a very popular job, especially during the holiday seasons when mm. it gets really busy at the malls. Um, a lot of, I think, teens, some of my friends who have kids and the teens, they, they, they did retail jobs. Mm. And I think that's a great way to, and, and I've heard, I don't know anybody personally, but tutoring or babysitting um, could uh -huh. be another opportunity for 
teens to make some money, right? Just to help. Them yeah. Well, I don't mind having my kids go into work retail, to be honest with you, because it is very difficult. I personally have not had that experience, but I think, you know, kids these days are in front of computers all day long. They don't really have that yes. social graces that they learn and, you know, interacting with other people. And I would rather they have a boss to tell them, oh, you need to greet people this way. You need to be, <laughs> instead of, you know, mom and dad telling them, oh, you should, you know, when you see, you know, the, the, the principal, you know, on the baseball court, you know, you're supposed to go up and say, hi, yes. you know, I'm, you know, so-and-so, how are you, you know? And so I'd rather somebody else teach them that. <laughs> so I, I would encourage my kids to go through retail, actually. No, I agree um, with you. It, and it teach them customer service. Yes. Right. How to communicate, how to look people in the eyes. Some kids don't even know how to do that nowadays. I've seen that. Exactly. And extend yourself instead of, you know, just being in your little bubble because there's all kinds of people you can meet. Yes. So besides earning yeah. money, it seems like it has, it has a lot of other benefits. Yes, absolutely. So, great. <laughs> and let's talk about keeping money. So in other words, saving, right? There's so many ways to go about. Is there anything any particular tips you have, Vicky, when it comes to savings? I think, you know, this is a topic for kids and adults alike. You know, it's important to save money. I mean, luckily in my line of work, pretty much all, all my clients are savers. So mm -hmm. I guess, you know, if they're not savers, you know, they probably wouldn't want to go see a financial advisor and, you know, try to find out what to do with the money. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I would say, um, saving is important. It's, it's, it's something you really wanted to um, instill in your kids' minds, especially when they start making money, because yes. it's so easy to spend it all. So if you read any, you know, finance book, personal finance books out there, you know, you really should save at least 10%. So the concept of your kids earn $10, you know, at least $1 goes into savings. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. but this day and age, you know, I mean, there's no more pension plans. There's, you know, social security is going to get push out more and more. So people really, kids these days, they really are on their own in terms of saving True. for their retirement and all. So, I mean, I would say even, 20% of the gross income they should consider setting aside. If they don't have any concept of a saving, just tell them, save 20%. Right. So just kind of like... <laughs> Rather be safe than sorry. Too much saving never hurts. Never hurts. So I think, you know, it's kind of the concept of um, delayed gratification, right? You know, you can spend all 10 mm -hmm. bucks, but you can also just 10, spend eight and then your $2, you know, will 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 set it aside for later to use. Mm -hmm. No, I, I totally agree with it. I feel like, especially in the US, we are such a culture of just spending beyond our means, right? Mm -hmm. If you earn $100, you spend 120 and then you're in debt for $20 that you put on your credit card. So I really, really believe in savings and the earlier you start, the better. And that, right. Would, right? And that leads us to a next topic later on growing, but I want to go keep staying with savings for a little bit. Because yeah. what, I, what I do with my kids, and I read this in a book. Um, so let's say they probably won't get $100 for their birthday. But let's say somebody, their grandparent gives them $100 for their birthdays. Mm -hmm. What I make them do is put them into different buckets. So I give, we agree on a certain percent. Hey, this is out of the $100, let's say 15 or 20, you can spend right away. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and then we have a short-term savings a long-term savings and a donation bucket. So it's like four different buckets. So the short-term savings is, let's say my son wants to buy his own iPad and it took him a little bit of time. It took him, I think, six months or so to get there. So mm -hmm. he had to keep putting money into his short-term savings bucket because he had a specific goal in mind. Mm -hmm. And then the long-term, I told him, don't even bother thinking about it. This is going to go towards college. Mm. So we, we agree on a percentage that goes onto college. So we have short-term savings, long-term savings, and then a small amount towards donations because because I think it's important for them to learn the concept now, even though they don't have much, but even though if it's just a dollar or five out of the hundred, they, mm -hmm. they get used to that concept. Um, so yeah, that's from my perspective. Well, that's great. I mean, you're, <laughs> you're ahead of so many people in terms of getting your kids organized, you know, thinking about money. Um, we don't use the bucket, but I think the bucket concept is, is great because then, you know, they have a certain goal in mind. I mean, in my line of work is the same thing, you know, we'll help clients set goals. So it's, it's kind of like keep you focused if it's mm -hmm. something you really want, like an iPad. So um, for me, we don't really put things in buckets, 
but you know, right now my kids are not making any money per se at 10 and 12, but you know, they do get money from uh, Christmas, birthdays, um, you know, at the red envelope, you know, from Chinese New Year's and yes. all, mm-hmm. all that. So, you know, with that money, what we do is that I, what I do is I tell them, uh, I give them a matching Mm. Kind of like people with 401k plans, you know, okay. if anybody with an employee with 401k plans, a lot of 401k plans, uh, most of them, you know, do do matching, meaning that you put a dollar in your 401k plan, your employer will give you a dollar. Mm-hmm. So pretty much, you know, the dollar you put in, you get a hundred percent return right away. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, it's just kind of a lot of those themes, you know, for, and I didn't make it up. I have many, many clients who are super smart. And I, I remember I heard it from one client and I, I use that concept and tell them that, Hey, you know, um, what do you think about, I, I, I let them make decisions, you know, on their mm-hmm. own. I said, you know, with this 50 bucks, you know, do you want to save all of it? If you save all in the bank, you know, you get a hundred bucks, mommy will match you. Wow. So I let them make a decision. So mm-hmm. good um, incentive. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just to get them to save. I mean, at this point, I can't really work that much, you know, on making money, but you know, on the saving part, because it's not like they have a lot of places to spend the money. So <laughs> true. We, sp- we, we are the ones spending for them. So there's not yeah. much. So, you know, I use uh, the concept of like, Hey, you know, matching concept for them to, you know, set the money aside. If nothing at all, just, you know, sort of get used to saving money. Yeah, you know, they might not get matching in the future, but you know, it just kind of, I think it's just planting the seed in their head, you know, when they're Agreed. so little, mm-hmm. you know, just kind of like, okay, save, 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 save. So that's kind of like, I, that's how I help them uh, save money. No, it's that's by a using really a matching good. concept. Yeah. Have they been biting onto that? So they, they kind of follow and say, Ooh, I can double my money right away. Do they follow yeah, that? Yeah, they do. They do. I mean, oh. I would say, uh, I would say 10 times I ask them, maybe eight times they will put the money in there. Wow. You know, there's sometimes, you know, it's about the dollar amount they want to put in. They, put, they, they like to feel like they have some money in their hands. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. So in their little wallet, they have some money that, you know, they can show, show it to the brothers <laughs> or to us that they have money. Not that they do anything with it. Yeah. It's nothing more than it just feels good. You know, it's security. Yeah. So anyway, so most of the times they, they, they actually take me up on it and they save it. And so we put it in a bank account and then when it gets to a certain dollar amount, I actually, you know, have them buy stocks. So that can probably be the next section we're talking yes. about. Uh huh. But really quick, you, you know, my daughter, she loves to eat, right? So she <laughs> actually has a Boba spending section. Oh, that's great. <laughs> So, so when she entered middle school, they go out Fridays. She loves to spend money on her boba drinks. That's really important to her. But to me, that's too much sugar. And I don't want to spend five bucks on a drink like every mm-hmm. other day. So I, after a while, I refuse to do that. So her spending a bucket, she's like, okay, this is, she has a sp- special area of her spending bucket that's just for boba or drinks oh. designated. I love it. I love it. I think, you know, this, all this concept of like making money, saving money, spending money, it would just all come into focus when the kids have, they have the ability or they have the needs to go out and spend money. Because right now, you know, at 10 and 12, you know, at this life stage, you know, my kids Mm -hmm. are not really quote unquote spending money and taking money out of the pocket to, you know, pay for stuff. It comes time that they have their needs of like, you know, hang, hang out friends, going to movies and going out to eat. Then, you know, they will have to start thinking about, you know, Mm -hmm. where the money comes from, should I go earn money? So I think kind of like in my mind, it's more like kind of naturally it will come about. So right now what I can influence is, you know, on the savings portion of the money they come in. So, but it's great. I I love talking to parents who have older kids, Yeah, you know, (laughs) anything that works, you just copy it. You don't have to recreate it. Right. I mean, I think it's good for them to have a little bit of money so they can have a say because it's also about to what's what you said earlier. It's, It's really the confidence part. Because mm-hmm. sometimes I just say, I don't want to spend on that. But if they have a little bit, then I give it a choice. Well, if you really want this, I don't know, pen, notebook, whatever it is that I mm-hmm. think it's ridiculous, I don't agree with, but then spend your own money. I'm not going to buy you another drink because you just had one yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but she wants it, then she pays for it herself. And then she, she's getting used to it. So right. She has her boba. <laughs> Right. Bucket just like area. your son. Although I came up with, this is, this is um, something that just came up just um, two days ago. And my, my younger son wants to play Fortnite. Mm. I don't know anything about Fortnite, but you know, uh, it, apparently you have to buy this 
game, this the system. I'm、uh-huh. sure, I'm sure your husband knows all about it. Probably. But,、um, <laughs> <laughs> and my husband knows about it, and then my two kids, they they both know about it. And so my younger son wants to buy it, and so. I, I, this is something I heard from one of my clients with four kids. You know, he, she, she said this: to not bring any games into the house if you can help it. You know, make it <laughs> kind of fun. When break, take them to arcade if you want to, because you know her son becomes very addicted to、mm-hmm. playing games, and、yes. so it affects his health as well. So he actually is approaching ob- obesity. So I remember hearing that story. So、mm-hmm. I'm just. Just truly, truly, do not want them to spend、uh, money on buying games. So that's kind of like my dilemma, because you know, you you said your son, your son is buying iPad. You know, great. You know, you you support that. Your daughter want to have a budget, you know, for、um, you know, baba drinks. You know, but then if my son wants to buy something, I really don't want him to do. So I have to kind of like think a little bit about it, whether I should I should support that or not. And and for me, I same thing. My younger son, he he plays a different game called Roblox. Mm. And and there's way, yes, and there's different ways of、um, earning your way up to collecting whatever game he's in within Roblox. Like if it's Adopt Me, then they have to upgrade for different pets, whatever that is. <laughs> I'm still trying to learn the game.、Um, but apparently, if you spend real money, you can buy Robux with it, and Robux allows you to kind of level up faster because you purchase within. Oh、yes. yeah, in-app purchases,、mm-hmm. and to me. I am not supporting it, but here and there, if he wants to spend five dollars, I'm like fine. But、mm-hmm. because he started his own YouTube channel, I see.、Uh, so we talked about it as an investment. I'm like, okay, only if it's part of your business plan investment.、So、we <laughs> talk about it from a business perspective, but I limit it. Like five bucks is the most, not just for fun, but if it、mm-hmm. serves a specific purpose for his YouTube channel, which relates to Roblox for now. So other than、yeah. that. I'm like, you want to play? Play free. I'm I'm not spending money because <laughs> the games you you play six months and then six months later you bored of it and you jump、mm-hmm. to the next one because we played games in the past. He spent like five dollars one time on a game. I forgot what it's called. Zombies vs. Plants vs. Zombies to buy some <laughs> cauliflower. Apparently that was amazing.、Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and and he's not playing it anymore. So that money is gone. So I've learned from that experience. I'm like, nope. Maybe five、oh. or ten is my max, and that's it. No more. I can't agree more. I mean, there's so many things of the software. I can't even remember what it is. They they went and took、um, some classes during summertime, and then you know they said the class that you know to buy this software. So I bought it. It's downloaded. Have I seen them use it? Never. <laughs> so yes. Yes. never.、Right. So I'm learning from that experience. You know, whatever you want, use your own money. So I have to like pick and choose, you know, what、mm-hmm. I wanted to support, support paying,、yes. paying for for them. And, yeah, <laughs> and then that's how we lead to the next topic is ra- we rather have that money grow, right? Yeah. So I think the, the growing concept is quite interesting for them.、Um, so my experience is that you know,、um, as I mentioned before, you know, I make them save money in the bank, and then right now the interest rate is super low, so they don't really see it growing. "Quote unquote." So, you know, part of what I do is help my clients grow the money. So,、mm-hmm. which is, you know, investing the money in different instruments such as stocks and bonds. So that's when I introduce them to、um, investing, you know, in company stocks.、Okay. And so,、um, so we put money in buying, you know,、um, some company stocks, and then it grew. And so I will report back to them. Hey, hey, you know, you make you know fifty dollars today. You know, you didn't have to do anything, and then it grows. And so I kind of and they 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 like it. They they really like that idea. Who doesn't? You know, you just sit there and then、right, the money grow fifty dollars. Passive income, yes. Yeah, I have not had an in-depth conversation with them at ten and twelve about you know what it is about, how to grow it, why it grows. But you know, I did also tell them that you know it it. I mean, just like I explained to. My clients, it depends on your time frame. You know, if you have a long time to go before you need this money, then yes, you can have it invested. But if you need this money like tomorrow, within、mm-hmm. you know even a year, you don't really want to put it in you know a stock market because you know I don't know if it's going to go up or down tomorrow, next week.、Um, but you know, I know in the long run. It will、mm-hmm. make money. It's kind of like you know, you and I. We live in Southern California. It's like owning a house.、Mm-hmm. You know, you buy a house today, 
it, you know, tomorrow it might go down in value in even six months or a year. But then if you own it for 10 years, you know, you probably will be making money. Yes. So that's a, that's a really good point. I think from a savings perspective, what I've learned when I was younger, I was too conservative. So there's really a fine balance between that. So I didn't know within savings, there's so many different types of savings accounts. There's a, a checking, a savings, a CD or certificate of deposit, money markets, and then there's yes. mutual funds and stocks. I did not know about any of that. So when I was younger, that was years ago, the interest rate was much higher. Mm. And, and the, the money I saved, because I had to pay for my international student college tuition, I only mm -hmm. put into checking because I didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. um, but had I known, and I think the interest rate back then was like, I don't know, three or 5%. Mm -hmm. that's all yeah. that's very high <laughs> yeah that was really high back then the the money that i need didn't need right away i could have put away in a money market or cd and that could have earned me money versus in checking which was much lower so learn a little bit about maybe go to your local bank i don't know if they they do that but mm -hmm. but learn about the different areas and the different types of accounts as a bank has yeah i mean i think you know and also good to I know as an adult, you know, it's good to hang around with people with to a like minded, you know, people who <laughs> yes. like to save money, who like to look around, you know, for the best interest rate, uh, best, you know, credit card with the, you know, best rewards program. And so, um, you know, for kids, I don't know if they would sit around, talk a little bit, talk about money, <laughs> no. but, you know, we probably could influence who they hang out with. Um, but like minded kids, you know, I mean, I think it would be great if you know if they get to go and talk a little bit about money you see what they talk about i actually um, make, make my son read books i don't know if i told uh, you before yeah so when he was and that was another way for him to earn so when he was nine years old um i thought about because i personally love personal development growth mm -hmm. and development books but i thought at nine he probably won't get it but i'm like mm -hmm. why not because i started in my early 20s but then mm -hmm. i read somewhere online that um this guy who was, I think a young adult, his dad started giving him money. I think it was $20 for each book that the mm -hmm. dad make him read. Uh -huh. And that's, that was his way of earning. So that's what I did with my son too. Uh, the first book I gave him was Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, that was one of my early, earliest uh, and first growth and development books. So I gave him that book I said, finish it, but, but I added one more thing. You have to write me a five page summary about what you learned. <laughs> that, was my, I am. that was my other condition. Cause I just don't want him to say, I'll finish reading mommy. I'm done. I really wanted him to tell me, what did you learn? So he had mm. to write a five page summary about what he learned. And then he got his $20, which he added to his iPad savings budget. Wow. I'm so proud of him. Actually, I, I, you did tell me that story. Uh -huh. And I try to implement it with my older son. Uh-huh. Right, my oldest son is 12 years old. It didn't go well. <laughs> it's like, oh, he just keep reading the same page over and over again. I think I'm going to try it again when he gets a little bit older. Yeah. So it, it, I, I don't know. He probably, it probably is a, it's because he, it's unlike your son who has a goal in mind because he really Maybe. wants, you know, uh -huh. uh, the iPad, but my son doesn't really have a goal in mind. So he doesn't have as much incentive, yeah. you know, to, to go read true. it. My, my older daughter, I tried to do the same with her. She's like, no, not interested. Not interested. <laughs> She's still on her first book while my son did three or four already. Yeah, I, I think, you know, every child is different and you probably mm -hmm, treat them differently. I think we chatted a little bit about it. I wouldn't say which of my child, but one of my child is, it's, it's a saver. He's very, he's very frugal. Uh, when we go, you know, order takeout, you know, he said, just pick me the cheapest item. <laughs> Just, uh, this is cheaper, you know, let's do this one. Uh -huh. And then my other child, you know, he has like $3 for allowance and he would spend $2.50 on a drink. Mm -hmm. I have one of those. Yes. One of which I'm not going to say it either. I have a spender and I, I have a, a reasonable person who's like, Oh no, it's too expensive mommy. But the other one is like, Oh, I want that. That looks fun. right. Right. And I think, I think, you know, as parents, you kind of have to, you know, look at your child and, you know, give them different incentives to do different things. But I think, you know, I mean, we both have the same mindset about, you know, making sure that educate them about, you know, money mm -hmm. and educate mm -hmm. them about saving money. And I think it's also really important 
one concept is basic, but you know, it makes a lot of sense, you know, when you say it, but a lot of people don't practice it is don't spend more than how much you, you make. Yes. Yes. I completely agree with that. Yeah. One. And unfortunately, you know, with the credit cards, you know, out there, it's just really easy to do because when you keep charging it, you know, you can overspend, you know, you charge $200, you only have hundred dollars in your bank. So, mm -hmm. but you know, it's also important to, you know, this is kind of important concept, but you and I have on the same page in terms of educating our kids. I yes. guess that's why we're on this podcast together. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> But one thing I, I've been trying to implement, which I haven't, when you mentioned buying stocks. So for those of you who don't know, buying stocks is really buying a share of a company. So you are a small owner of a company. And I, what I wanted to do since last year, and I haven't done it, is put about $50 into an account for him to buy stocks. And then each month. And I was hoping for him to choose. So at least because daddy is really into investing. So daddy talks to the kids about this mm -hmm. stock and this share. And then we talk about, you know, the Netflix and the Amazon and the Tesla. Mm -hmm. So we do have those discussions, even though it just goes way over their heads. And they're mm -hmm. like, so checked out. But they, they, they get the concept about companies that they're familiar with and something about stocks. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to do is really give them a say, even though it's just one share or maybe not even one <laughs> some stocks you can't afford when they're like oh yeah I know. thousands no. of dollars a share but <laughs> we'll, we'll see what we can do um and and just have them choose one because when we think back i mean i i, I talked to another friend the other day and she was like well um because her sons are um high school senior and um juniors and she said back in the days when they got all those red envelope money for chinese new year mm -hmm. if we would have bought tesla or netflix or <laughs> amazon when it was a few hundred dollars whatever that might be it would they would be so much better off right <laughs> and um my brother-in-law when my nephews and nieces were younger my kids didn't exist back then but when they were younger he actually bought one disney stock for each of them oh back in the days when it was mm -hmm. 25 dollars or whatever it was back in the days mm -hmm. and each time when disney paid dividends he was like here here's your two bucks or whatever the amount <laughs> that fun share that they have. Um, so just to, to get them to think about the concept, the stocks, like the stock market, it exists. So at least they have an idea what it is. But I think yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you. They, they might be a little bit young, but you know, it's, it's good to kind of, I, I know a lot of people, you know, if they like uh, certain companies, you know, you can actually get the stock certificate and just kind of, it's a really pretty, Mm -hmm. certificate it can just frame it for one share I, I think you know i mean it's good to talk about it they might not understand but i think you know families who talk about stocks and growing money and you know if they you can actually just start doing it for them you know just buy a share and mm -hmm. of you know companies they like and just that's what i do with my kids and let them know well we bought this last year at this price and now you know it's worth this much so you have mm -hmm. made this money and their eyes would just go whoa yeah you know they, they've made money but i think one of the things that um, for a lot of our clients, in my experience, um, to be successful in saving money and growing money, it's one of the things to keep in mind is to be consistent. Good one. So, yes. yeah, what that means is that, I don't know if you've heard of the concept of dollar cost averaging. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically putting a set dollar amount into the market at, a, you know, at, at, at the same frequency, you know, be it every paycheck, every two weeks, twice a month, every month, just consistently putting money in. So because investing is such an emotional business. Yeah. Oh, yes. And, and I'm in the business, the only business where, you know, when my goods is on sale, nobody wants it. What that means <laughs> is that, listen, you know, if toilet paper is on sale, you will rush in and buy, you know, triple... <laughs> triple amount of you know toilet paper you normally buy but you know when stocks is on sale meaning that it goes down in price nobody wants to get into yes. buying it yeah so but that's the best time so what happens is that you know if you build in some consistency and you know just mechanically build in you know some systems to buy into it that's probably the best way to grow money and to build wealth it's just consistently putting money in so um, there's, you know, places where you can, you know, just consistently buying into, you know, different shares. Um, and, you know, that's, that's, I would say, you know, what that will happen probably should happen, you know, when your child consistently start making money. Now they just get a red envelope here, birthday money there, but it may not be as consistent. So you as parents, you know, will probably have to 
you know, take that money and just buy shares for them. But I would, I would say, you know, in my experience as a financial advisor, consistency makes a big difference in terms of, you know, being successful in, in saving money or building wealth. Yes, I, I cannot agree more. I, I think I learned that too when I was at work and in my 401k, which is basically a savings account towards my retirement at the company. And when you first start your first job, you might not even never heard about a 401k before or don't know what to do. And when you lock in, there's like 20, 30, 50 options. You don't know what to select. And most people, they're so scared they don't do anything. But one thing I learned early on, they said, just put it away and pretend you never even earned that money. So it goes right out of your paycheck before you even see the paycheck. Yeah, And, and, and it's dollar averaging because sometimes I, I'm lucky I buy at a low, sometimes at a high, but on average, it goes up based on history, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing because I've heard people, young people say, oh, wow, you know, uh, my 401k is 10,000. It's 20,000. And before you know it, it's, you know, it's, it's 100,000. And it just kind of goes up from there. But, you know, it's just the consistency. And, you know, one of the things I mentioned to you is that I just love coaching young people, especially when they start, you know, earning a paycheck, mm -hmm. because, you know, these are some of the concepts that, you know, they should kind of have in mind, especially when they're younger. And once you help them set it up, okay, well, it's 10% or 20% of your paycheck. You know, if that just goes out to savings from the first paycheck on, they don't really know, they don't miss that money. So, mm -hmm. and then, you know, from there on, you know, they will be saving 20% of the income for the next 20 years. And that That's makes true. a huge difference. And then they so, surprised five years later how much that has grown. They forgot about it. Exactly. And, you know, I mean, hopefully they don't keep looking at it and try to tap into it. And, you know, the hopes is that, you know, be the market go up, it goes up or down, you know, they will still continue putting money away. So that's how, you know, I, I help clients and I see them building wealth is just consistently putting the money away. Yes. And I think what I've learned is early on because of time value of money, that mm -hmm. money grows, um, compound interest, basically your money earning money for you. And that interest that you earned is continuing to earn. So the sooner you start, the less you have to save in the future. Yes. And I have, um, you know, I've coached young people. I've loved clients with, you know, children who started mm -hmm. you know, working. So, you know, there's a lot of good visuals you can show them, you know, like if you start, if, you know, you want to retire at 55 or 60 years old, you know, you start saving, you know, in your twenties, then, you know, you only need to save, you know, $500 a month. But if you wait 10 years later to start saving instead of 500, you might have to save a thousand dollars a month to catch right. up. Mm -hmm. And then if you wait even longer and then 10 years to save, then you might have to do $2,000 a month. So it just gets more expensive, True. using terms that they understand, more expensive if the longer you wait to save money. So if you're, this is something I say, your goals are never as cheap as they are today. It's <laughs> Good the one. cheapest. I, like I would suggest um, just to learn, it doesn't matter how old you are, how can you grow your money? But of course, be careful because sometimes... Or many times there's risk involved. The better, the higher the return, the higher the risk. So be careful. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, but start learning how to grow. That's my advice. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that because you know in my line of business, you know there's actually quite a few questions you ask before mm -hmm. you can help clients. You know, put the money in the right places because you know everybody has different risk tolerance and they have different time frame. So you know when you hear your next door neighbor, you know uh, a friend, you know doing something, buying something, it might not be the right thing for you. True. So yeah, good yeah. point. So yeah, that's growing. And then the next one we mentioned earlier is. Spending, or I, I also would call it budgeting, because I think budget is a huge one. You don't just spend mindlessly, right? You get a paycheck, you earn $100. Finally, after working so many hours, you don't just spend it without thinking about it. And that's where budgeting comes in, right, Vicky? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something, you know, when we work with clients, it's, it's very interesting because um, so... Budgeting, it's, it's, it's interesting in the sense that, you know, people can tell you how much they spend, but actually how much they actually spend can be completely different than what they tell oh, you. Oh, yes. Um, and I actually have one client. It was very funny. When I first met her, um, you know, she gave me all her expenses. And then the second year, we do financial planning every year because, you know, situations, you know, changes every mm -hmm. year. So we kind of read, 
it's kind of like you go to a checkup with your doctor, you know, you check up this year and the next year things change. So you check it again. So at the second year, and I said, oh my, you know, how come your budget for clothing went up three times? And she said, <laughs> she said, Vicky, last year, I didn't know you very well. I didn't want to tell you. <laughs> she didn't tell you the truth. <laughs> I didn't want to tell you this is actually how much I spend on this, these items. So, but this is the real number. It's not like went up so much. I always remember this story. Women, their purses and their shoes. And <laughs> <laughs> so I remember that story. But I think budgeting is just like what I said before. You know, you don't want to spend more than how much you make. Yes. And before you start spending, you really need to set 10%, the minimum, if not 20% aside, you know, for savings. And then the rest of it, you know, you, 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 can, you can spend it. And I call saving, like, I call, call that paying yourself. I don't first. know if you heard of that Paying term. yourself first. Pay yourself first. Yeah, yes. you pay everybody. Like, you know, for adults, you know, you, you pay your mortgage, you pay, make car payments, you pay utility bills, insurance, but, you know, you want to pay yourself first. Set yes. money aside in mm -hmm. your savings or 401k, you know, before you start spending money. Uh -huh. Completely agree. Because when you put it aside right away before you see the paycheck, you don't even miss it. But mm -hmm. it's harder for you to all of a sudden take money out of your paycheck and say, oh, great, now I have to put this into savings. But just set it up, set it and forget it. At the very yes. beginning. So you never see and for, sometimes really don't remember you had that. And that yes. was a huge difference in the future. Yes, yes. The, I, I can't agree more. We actually, you know, we have clients who save outside of their retirement plans as well. So what we do is that, you know, we synchronize um, automatic pool from the bank account with mm. the paycheck. Mm -hmm. So let's say they need to save, you know, additional, you know, $500 over and beyond, you know, what they save in a 401k plan. So as soon as the paycheck comes in on a Friday, you know, we set it up so that, you know, we pull the money they need to save, you know, outside of the 401k plan, you know, out of the, the checking account or savings account before, you know, they will see it. So that actually works out really well. It's good to build some mechanics into, yes. into savings. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you, since you sit down with your clients, because um, I do that personally before a new year starts, I sit down with my husband and try to do a budget for the family for the upcoming year. Mm -hmm. uh, in Excel, we do this very... Um, easily. But do you do something like that with your clients, sit down with them and, and teach them how to set a budget or is this more on their own, how they want to do it? Yeah. You know, what happens is that um, the most important line item we have while clients are, you know, um, saving for retirement is actually the savings. Uh, and then everything else, we actually don't need to pick what they spend money on. Mm -hmm. You know, they can spend what we do when we give them a budget, you know, just to help them jot down, you know, how they, they spend money. And sometimes it's a very enlightening, uh, enlightening exercise because they're like looking at, oh, I didn't realize I spent, you know, a thousand dollars a month on eating out. Mm -hmm. So yes. that will bring up, you know, another subject, you know, to talk about. But, you know, generally, you know, we work with the clients however way they want to. Sometimes they itemize everything. Some clients come in, they have, you know, everything on Excel. They know exactly, you know, where they spend the money. But some clients, they just say, you know, I get paid this much money and I approximately charge everything on my credit card and then on my um, mortgage. So I approximately spend, you know, X dollars amounts on, on per month. So we work with them, whatever capacity it is. Uh, the, the time that, you know, we're concerned and we dig pretty deep, you know, into the budget is when we see them either uh, depleting the savings oh, yeah. or have a lot of credit card debt. So mm -hmm. those are the two situations where we realize that, huh, they are spending more than how much they make. Yeah. So that's when, you know, the, the finance police comes in, that <laughs> will come in and say, you know, something is not working here. You're spending more money, you know, than how much you, you bring in. But uh, generally, you know, from li my line of work, you know, we, um, we, clients, you know, we don't really nitpick saying that, you know, well, you're supposed to only spend $500 on groceries, but you spend a little bit more or less. But, you know, when we deal with our children, you know, that might be a little bit different. And mm -hmm. it, it can be easier to start because, you know, they don't have 25 different expense items, you know, to deal uh, yeah. with. They might have, you know, the Baba budget, and then, <laughs> the, Baba know, budget. the Roblox budget. You know? <laughs> and so we can kind of start from that point. Uh -huh. um, and I yeah. think it's important just for them at a young age to learn the concept about um, budgeting because I'm um, in another episode of a podcast. I, I told you about the book before. Um, it, it's called, it, it comes from a younger version of the seven habits of highly effective people. So the seven uh -huh. habits, of happy kids. 
Mm-hmm. And I, I covered that book in another podcast episode. And one story was talking about Goop. He started with a goal in mind. So he said, I remember okay, that one. Remember that story? Yes. And so yes. basically he was like, okay, I, I need to buy so-and-so a birthday gift. So probably $2. And I need to, um, I would love to buy a slice of pizza because I'm hungry. So it costs a dollar. So he listed down. So that was kind of a budgeting in a simpler format. Mm-hmm. So he listed down and it added up to, I don't know, $10. And mm-hmm. then he went back and started the lemonade stand to earn. And when he earned the $10, he knew exactly what to do with it. And he accomplished all his goals. So that's mm-hmm. an easy way of, of budgeting. Uh, if mm-hmm. any kids ever want to start that. Because as an adult, like Vicky said earlier, you have so many different expense categories. It, it could very, could get complicated very easily. Yeah. And I think that's a really good idea um, to kind of get them used to that idea. And I think, I think it starts with, you know, when kids are having more needs, like in that story, um, you know, they have specific items they want to buy. So I think it's also important to kind of help your kids set goals. I mean, they might have goals, but then it's good if they don't have it, you know, help them set goals because, you know, once they have goals, it's easier to save money toward the goals. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's spending just in a nutshell, really quick. But I want to, before we go, because I, I, I wanted to dive deeper into savings on specific categories later on, but I wanted to touch upon donation really quick. Is there anything particular you advise your clients or your families on? Well, um, I think for donating, we, we don't have a budget for that. You know, I do it um, for the charities that I, I like. And mm-hmm. so I have to say, this is an area that I need to work on. A bit same more, here, you know? same here. Yeah. The only thing I did for the kids is like the little donation bucket, but it's small. They only put like a dollar in a dollar there. So I don't want to go to a charity and say, here's five bucks. <laughs> yeah. So, but hopefully that will grow over time and then they can choose their favorite charity and give it to them. Yeah. Do you, do you actually introduce them to different charities? So how, how do you, how do you think you are going to uh, allocate that money in that bucket? We haven't thought about it fully, but um, unfortunately, when I used to work for Disney, there there was this Disney Volunteers, like with the ears oh, program, sorry. and I used to um, donate my time there. But also, Disney used to give matching, basically when you donate money, mm-hmm. um, so to a lot of organization. And I I've learned when we were still in the elementary school and we donated money back to our school yeah. that um, they would match to certain schools too. So a lot of larger corporations do matching. So if you don't know, just ask your company, maybe they match. So if you want to give $500, $1,000 to your school or whatever charity that you support, your company will match the amount up to a certain amount. So I, I talk about it with the kids here and there, but I think we need to do a better job as well. And yeah. uh, what I was hoping to do is not just money, but also time. I really hope for them, well, this year it's not going to be possible, but during the holidays to, mm. to learn how to, you know, donate to the homeless. Um, my younger son is part of Cub Scout. What they did is they put a care package together where they have a bottle of water, hand sanitizers and, and different daily needs products. And he put it in a large Ziploc bags and we have two of those. You know, that is a great idea because, you know, my, my kids, they, you know, we drive by and we see homeless people. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and then, you know, they wanted to give money to the homeless mm-hmm. people, but our concerns is that, you know, does it go to, you know, you the know, right purpose, yes. the right purpose, <laughs> or, you know, is it because, Same you here. know, anyway, so, but that's a great idea. We can have them, I can have my kids start setting some money aside and just buy essentials and put it in a Ziploc bag. Yes. You know, hand sanitizers are great because of COVID-19, right? That's right. right. Maybe a mask or two. I think we should add a mask to it now that I think about it. Yeah, um, that's really good. Water essentials, tissues. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my company has a day of service. They have two days in a year that you know we donate our time. So I actually have gone to um, the food bank, you mm-hmm. know, to donate. So you know, you kind of put packages together, and then also Salvation Army and quite a few things. But the kids are not allowed, though. You know, those uh, yeah. um, those facilities. But um, but it, it's good to talk to them about uh-huh. it. But I really like your idea about putting care packages together. Yeah, that's from the Cub Scout. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take credit, but I, I loved it. Yeah, you don't really have to reinvent the wheels, right? As I said, you know, if it works for somebody else, you know, just copy it. If, yes. Just, 
Yeah, absolutely. But I think what I wanted to talk to them about is really when um, catastrophes happen, right? When, well, years ago, when the tsunami, the big tsunami occurred, they were too young. Um, but like fi- the local fires we've had in California, mm. right? Every time there is something big or a hurricane hits, I think the next time I really want to sit down with them and say, hey, look, people in this area have been impacted by this event. So mm-hmm. what can we do for them? So really maybe have them think about not just money, but also time or products, right? Something that yes, would be helpful. Yes. Well, when you have those conversations with your kids, let me know. We'll, okay. we'll do a conference. Yeah. So we'll yes, all do it together. Yes, let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> because years ago, we just did with my friends. I had a party and everybody just brought products and we just wrapped it here um, mm-hmm. for, for kids, right? With toys. So I think they had this at school. So I made my kids give some of their toys away that were brand new. They weren't uh-huh. too happy about it, but it's, it's good for them to know. I'm like, look, you don't even play with it. You open it and then it sits there and collects dust. Mm-hmm. But somebody else would really appreciate it. Yeah, so absolutely. Half the conversation. I think, yeah. I, well, next time you, you're doing anything like that, call me. We okay. don't that far away. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll do that. <laughs> well, wasn't Vicky amazing so far? I know we covered a lot of great points about money and personal finance, and there was actually a lot more. And that's why I decided to split this podcast into two different episodes. So in part one, we covered different buckets of money, right? How we can view it. So we talked about earning money, keeping or saving money, growing money. We talked about expenses, spending, and a little bit about budgets, as well as donations. In part two about the podcast, we will cover a little bit more long-term savings and especially focused on college savings. So make sure you tune into that episode as well. We appreciate the time that you spend with us and make sure you hit the favorite button or subscribe button so that you don't miss any future episodes of our podcast. Thank you again for your time and hope to connect with you next time. Talk to you soon. Bye.